Welcome to the Tech Check Plus live stream. I'm Pippa Stevens, and I'm thrilled to be joined today by Jake Lucereri, and he is the co-founder and CEO at Gecko Robotics. Jake, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me on, Pippa. All right. So first of all, energy is one of, if not the most important theme over the last year with so much focus on the space. So I know you just got back from Davos. What kind of conversations were you having there on the ground? How does the energy space look to you overall? It's a great way to start. Um, a lot of the conversations at Davos was, were pretty broad as it relates to energy crisis. I talked, uh, was on a panel with uh, Christopher Ray, the director of the FBI, uh, on a panel with uh, uh, the first deputy prime minister of, uh, of Ukraine about energy crisis in Ukraine, uh, as well as Senator Manchin talking about the Inflation Reduction Act. So a broad range of topics around energy. Um, and I actually wrote a piece about this as well. Um, this is important of transitioning fossil, uh, fossil based energy um, to more renewable based energy. And that the, the struggles of doing that, not just in Western, Western countries, but also um, across uh, many different kinds of countries and um, how difficult it is. And, and an interesting stat um, that I'll tell you is uh, Goldman Sachs looked at uh, the reliance on fossil fuels um, 10 years ago, 82% reliance on fossil fuels for energy. Um, and then $3.8 trillion later, 10 years later, 81% reliance on, on fossil for our energy. So we talked a lot about how difficult it is to transition and also what breaks as you transition, uh, which is actually um, pretty core to what I'm focused on and what the mission of uh, my company, Gecko Robotics, is all about. And that's a great transition to Gecko Robotics. So we heard about how you look, how you view the energy space, and then what does Gecko Robotics do? How are you helping, you know, transform the energy sector? So as we transition, and how and how Gecko is focused on um, uh, transitioning and, and working with energy energy companies, infrastructure companies, defense companies. The company is all about building robots, like wall climbing robots, sensors, fusing data layers like those together. Um, into decision-making software to help predict when the built environment will fail, how to ensure it doesn't fail, um, and actually how to increase the useful life of it and get more out of it as you transition to smart infrastructure, uh, utilizing um, ideally principles that uh, are described in Industry 4.0, um, things that you know, we, we are trying to build a future where you can you know, predict and prevent and get the most you can out of power plants, out of... Uh, out of uh, uh, military equipment um, to defend our, our ideals and our nations, um, as well as infrastructure like bridges. I'm here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where um, mm -hmm. a bridge collapsed recently when the president was here. Um, these things uh, are failing, and they're, they're mostly accepted that they're old, they're going to fail. And, and our, our company is all about ensuring that we protect that critical infrastructure and give form to a new infrastructure um, into the future that's smart, intelligent, and utilizes Industry 4.0 principles. And for those not as, as deep in this industry as you are, you know, when you talk about built environment, what exactly is that just infrastructure? What exactly are you talking about? Yeah, it's pretty, it's built environment is a, is a big word. Um, what built environment means for us, what we're focused on um, as a company is all about having our robots and sensors climb all over things like ships or missile silos um, or uh, power plant um, assets, uh, pipelines at refineries, hydroelectric dams like the Hoover Dam, um, just a bunch of different physical uh, infrastructure that me and you use and, and rely on every day. But, um, you know, we expect them to always be there for us. And, and what I'm here to tell you is um, uh, that expectation that they've, they've always been relied on, always be there for us, um, is, is potentially uh, a pretty um, misinformed uh, way of thinking about the built world. Yeah, it seems like we only really think about the infrastructure when it fails. And then, the, you know, the majority of the time when it's working, that's when we don't even notice and we take it for granted until there are these high profile and devastating things like bridges collapsing. So that kind of outlines for us what right. Gecko Robotics does, but then kind of drilling down on specific use cases. I know that the U.S. Navy is one of your one of the part the, one of the clients you've worked with. So walk us through how exactly what their problem was and how you helped them. Yeah, so we've just we started in the energy sector. I mean, I so I, I started Gecko um, Robotics in college, built the first wall climbing robot in, in college at a power plant um, where uh, it was just accepted that 40 percent of the year the power plant failed because of uh, infrastructure failures. And that was just accepted. And and people even died trying to prevent the uh, the assets from failing. Um, and so, you know, back then, that um, 
that there is would be applicable to so many different use cases. But funny enough, um, you know, there's very similar uh, ways to build uh, a battleship that there is to build a power plant. And so with the Navy, um, it was just at the Reagan National Defense Forum with Secretary of the Navy Del Toro. We were talking about mission readiness of critical infrastructure as it relates to uh, as it relates to uh, battleships and aircraft carriers. So what we're working on with them, we've been on uh, about five ships so far um, in, in the recent months, um, has been on ensuring that we turn around um, as quickly as possible how ready the uh, the, the ship uh, the battleship is uh, to be able to deploy uh, into Pacific into the Pacific region especially um, to ensure that the uh, the fueling stations are not going to leak and they're going to be reliable um, for the for the Navy to rely on. Um, so it's all about mission readiness. It's about resiliency of the fleet and do, getting as much out of this infrastructure for the Navy that's 50, 60, 70 years old that's beginning to fail um, and trying to ensure that we get more, as much as we can out of uh, those critical assets. This is very similar to what we're doing with the Air Force, very similar to what we're doing with our uh, power and oil and gas customers and, and renewable customers as well. And on an even more granular level, what kind of data is your are, are your robots collecting you know on the ship what are they looking for and then how is that all packaged together as a recommendation yeah great question so in the world of robotics um the data that we're interested in the data that our robots are climbing all over these physical uh, pieces of infrastructure we're really interested in the structural integrity of a thing um, that uh, structural integrity could be erosion data it could be corrosion it could be cracking it could um, um, uh, it could be looking at thermal imaging um, uh, to see how well something is operating. What we're interested in is trying to figure out as much as we can about um, the state of a thing um, and then try to understand how the thing will last before it fails and make sure it doesn't fail when we don't, when we don't want it to. Uh, when we don't want it to. Um, so you want to be able to predict. We, li we live in, in a world, in this built environment, uh, a world of reacting to things when they break. Um, whether it be a power plant shutting down, not be able to provide us power, um, or it be um, you know uh, waiting 18 months to turn around uh, an aircraft carrier from uh, maintenance, um, we we just you know we we just react to things. What we're trying to do is gather information um, like this structural integrity data, and be able to predict when they'll fail. But then it actually is interesting. We begin fusing data sets that never existed before that robots like ours are collecting, and integrating that with other types of data sets. Um, this is something that um, we just launched a recent partnership with Siemens Energy on. I think what gets really interesting is when you can actually get more out of uh, the existing infrastructure. And this is a critical point, Pippa, because uh, we need to get more uh, out of the things that um, are existing and, and, and there that we rely on than we currently are getting because we're consuming more energy um, and, the, and geopolitically, um, it becomes more and more important for countries to be able mm -hmm. to get more out of their critical assets. And when you talk about how a lot of the time right now it's very reactive, I guess as as uh, infrastructure failures are more and more high profile, and also as companies want to be more aware of the of the issues that some of their assets face, I guess my question is: when you have conversations with potential clients now, what is the motivating factor here? Is it that they're worried that their asset might fail, or is it that they're trying to get ahead of any potential future failures and they're looking to save expenses right now? As in, I guess in other words, how critical yeah. are the needs? I'll give you a couple examples. Um, so our, our company has gathered information um, about, uh, um, well, well, we'll take a coal, coal, coal power plants, for example. So we looked at this last year, 20% of all coal power plants in the US, for example. What we found is that 40% of those power plants will be experiencing critical outages uh, in the next three to 12 months. Um, now, if you extrapolate that out for the entire US, that is about 31, 32 million megawatt hours of energy that won't be available to you and me. Um, that drives up prices and that creates uh, a bunch of constraints um, and actually impacts the environment in pretty important ways. And to put that in perspective, that's about uh, enough power to power California for two months. And so um, why, um, you know what what that means is that we um you know, we, we can't see these these problems coming uh, which makes it really hard to be able to invest properly and prepare um, a resilient grid and, and a grid that can be um, uh, invested in a way that can um, can increase the reliance on renewables as opposed to reliance on fossil these types of things you know one of the hard things about uh, renewable investments right now is the return on their investment for renewable uh, for wind for wind turbines for example is about three to four percent for for people building wind turbines 
And the reason why it's is, is, it's uh, one of the reasons why it's that it's that bad and creating such a, a hard incentive for um, people to invest in, in wind turbines uh, is because of this um, um, the, this uh, the reactionary grid that we face hmm. and being able to ensure that you know we're, we're uh, the things that we believe will be reliable and available for us will actually be there. So it's, it's super important uh, to utilize. Um, data and digitization to transform the way we think about um, uh, elect electrical grid resilience. Um, and the only way to do that is to decode it. And that's what robots and software should be focused on doing. And given that you founded Gecko Robotics about a decade ago, um, have you seen a shift in terms of willingness to adopt data insights and use data and machine learning and AI and everything to make all of these projects that much better? You know, are, are people embracing it much more now? They, uh, it, th companies um, are embracing this at a pace I haven't seen before. I started this company mm -hmm. in 2013 uh, and co in college, bootstrapped it, um, got my first uh, investment um, from Y Combinator in uh, 2016 and um, Man, it was really hard to to try and uh, you know communicate to a to a power company that they issued robotics and software to make decisions um, to inform decisions. But I'll tell you what, right now um, there's actually a windfall that we're seeing at the beginning of this year, um, you know, even more than we projected in terms of the adoption rates of of uh, this technology. And I'll give you an example of why. Uh, the biggest uh, one of the biggest power plants uh, on the East Coast um, used Gecko, um, and they were experiencing. You know, they, they, use, they use Gecko to gather this information to predict when things will break. They were experiencing 14 outages per year, which was, you know, which was, uh, um, you know, about uh, one tenth of their production um, that they could have that year. And we, they, we took them from all those outages uh, per year to zero outages within two years because they were able to be informed by, by data. Um, and a refinery, one of the biggest refineries in the U.S., used Gecko to prevent um, a potential ca uh, catastrophe. Uh, that would have taken down 60% of their uh, refining capacity for about a month. Um, a similar explosion just happened in Philadelphia at a refinery that took down the, the Philadelphia refinery, um, killed some people, and, and uh, was, was, a, was, 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 was bad for a bunch of reasons, environmental being one of them. And so what, we're, what I'm seeing is um, we are at a point where energy, um, the energy crisis uh, and conflicts around the world are actually accelerating um, accelerating the adoption rates of technology like this because we have to uh, we have to figure out ways um, to, um, to to fight um, and provide um, solutions to customers um, and, and and bills like the inflation reduction act are actually a, an example of 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 uh, you know what america is doing um, to try and compete with uh, other nations mainly in, in particular china um, uh, to ensure that we can be um, uh, in a position where um, our energy infrastructure um, and, the, and the things that power, um, you know, the power industries um, are going to be able to compete uh, in the coming years. Um, and we're making good investments to compete with uh, companies like, you know, countries like China. Um, so, you know, what I'm seeing is, uh, is very positive, um, but um, <laughs> data driving decisions needs to be something that's mainstream and not uh, on the fringes. And when you say that you've seen just a huge amount of interest in Gecko, I imagine that's also good for the company itself. And you've raised about 120 million through a Series C round. So what, what what's next for Gecko Robotics? Um, growth is uh, is what we're all about right now. Uh, we, we just launched a, a pretty large um, a deal in Europe with Siemens Energy. Um, um, I was just uh, uh, texting with um, uh, one of the senior um, uh, leaders uh, in the Ukraine about ways uh, to to try and combat the 30% um, um, of their population that doesn't have energy right now. Uh, we just launched a partnership in the UAE, uh, actually in the Middle East, um, um, with uh, the, the next-gen FDI programs. We have boots on the ground and an office set up in, in the UAE, in the Middle East. Um, we secured some pretty large contracts with the DOD on the Air Force and Defense side, or Air Force and, and Navy side. So, um, so it's, uh, you know, we're, and we're also launching a, f a few interesting products on the software side coming out this year. So, a, l a lot of this is like we've built we've built such an incredible uh, data um, a data layer um, that sees into the, this physical world, uh, and now we're beginning to help companies drive very large outcomes as it relates to uptime and extending useful life of infrastructure, and and more importantly on the emissions as well. 
Well, sitting at the intersection of data, energy, and infrastructure is definitely a good place to be right now. Jake Lucerarian, thank you so much, co-founder and CEO at Gecko Robotics. We so appreciate your joining us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on.